Hi guys, this is chapter 7, Nuclear Energy in Society. Here are some key concepts of chapter 7. After completing this chapter, you'll be able to distinguish between radioactive and stable materials. Explain what an isotope is and identify its physical characteristics. Describe and solve problems related to radioactive decay. Explain what it means by solve problems related to a half-life. Describe and explain the concept of mass energy equivalence using famous formula from Einstein, energy is equal to mc square. Calculate energy output of a nuclear reactions. Describe and compare nuclear fission and nuclear fusion. Explain the fundamental principles of fusion and fission reactors. And analyze and discuss social and environmental issues related to application of nuclear energy. This is section 7.1, atoms and isotopes. The model of the atom has been evolved throughout centuries. It started with the Greek model 400 BC as the smallest indivisible particle that made up all matter. The name atom comes from Greek word that means indestructible, indivisible, or unbreakable. This model stayed true for more than 22 centuries. In 1803, John Dalton picture atom as a tiny indestructible particle with no internal structure. So not that far from Greek model. In 1897, Joseph John Thompson, a British scientist, discovered electron that lead to his plum pudding model of the atom. He pictured electrons embedded into a sphere of positive electric charge. A big step forward in this model came from Nagaoka a Japanese physicist who suggests that an atom has a central nucleus, electrons move in orbit like rings around Saturn. And then Ernest Rutherford built up on this idea. In 1911, he stated that an atom has a dense, positively charged nucleus Electrons move randomly in a space around the nucleus. His student, Neil Bohr, in 1913, came up with his model, which is the basic model that explains the structure of the atom nowadays, that electrons move in a spherical orbits at a fixed distance from the nucleus. Then another uh, phase change for uh, explaining the atom is a charge cloud model. In a 1926, Erwin Schrödinger developed mathematical equation to describe the motion of electrons in an atom. His work leads to electron cloud model that is quantum mechanic model. In 1932, James Chadwick, a British physicist, confirmed the existence of neutrons which have no charge. Atomic nuclei contain neutrons and positively charged protons. Bohr Rutherford model of the atom is far from reality, however, it's simple and is good enough to explain the structure of the atom. That's what we use. This model has the following key features. Most of the atom consists of empty space. The dense nucleus contains the atom's protons and neutrons. An electron is a negatively charged particle that move in a space surrounding the nucleus, what we call energy level or shells. And shells are filling up by electrons in this pattern. 
the first shell or a first energy level can take up to two electrons. And if the first shell is filled up, then the electrons are going to fill the second shell. And that's up to eight electrons. And if the second one is filled up, then electrons will jump to the third energy level that can take up 18 electrons and so on in the fourth shell it's up to 32 electrons proton is a positively charged particles and neutrons are uncharged particles that made up the nucleus as we said Protons and neutrons, referred to collectively as nucleons, have approximately the same mass. Unless you are calculating nuclear energy, this difference in mass is often neglected. Relatively tiny electrons orbit the nucleus in a certain energy level that we call orbits or shells. A ground state is a state in which all electrons are in their lowest possible energy levels. And here is an example when in a first energy level that occupy up to two electrons for hydrogen, which has only one electron, this state is called ground state because it is on a first energy level. On a different diagram on the left, you see that hydrogen jumped, uh, hydrogen electron jumped already on a second energy level. So that is an excited state because it's a state in which one or more electrons are at a higher energy level than in a ground level, ground state level. How is that happen? When an electron receives a package of energy, what we call quantum, that is covered in a quantum physics, then the electron is absorbing that energy and is jumping to another energy level. That is exactly the energy level that matches to the extra energy that that electron absorbs when that energy is released back in the form of photons, then electron will jump back to a lower energy level. Let's talk about atomic number, mass number, or atomic mass, and the periodic table. The atomic number is a number of protons in an atom of the element. Each element has a different number of protons. Mass number or atomic mass is equal to a number of nucleons or sum of protons and neutrons in a nucleus. For example, fluorine has a nine protons and nine electrons. Then number of neutrons is determined by subtracting atomic number from mass number. Take a look. You have a, a element of fluorine and there are two numbers on that box. The biggest number is atomic mass, which is number of protons plus number of neutrons. And the smallest number is a number of protons or atomic number. So in order to get number of neutrons, you subtract atomic number from atomic mass. So both numbers are in that box of the periodic table. So now we can say that number of neutrons for a fluorine is 10. Let's practice for drawing a Bohr-Rutherford diagram of silicon. We locate element of silicon in a periodic table, which is a 14th. So it is a number 14 is 14 protons and obviously it is a 14 electrons and atomic mass is 31. We can calculate number of neutrons by subtracting 14 from 31 and we get 17 neutrons. Then we draw a diagram with the protons and neutrons in the nucleus 
and an electron in a designated energy level starting with inner up to 2 and the second one is up to 8 third one is 18 and fourth one is up to 32 so let's draw a nucleus first then we can draw on energy levels then we can label the nucleus how many protons and neutrons do we have so we have 14 protons and 17 neutrons in a nucleus then we can start drawing electrons so on the first energy level we have just two then we have to jump to another energy level because the first energy level can hold only two up to two so then we can start drawing in a clockwise and then we know that in a we have 14 electrons so that means we have one two three four five six and we need more seven eight nine and ten we still need more and we have four more so 11 12 13 14 so we are done with uh, drawing electrons if we actually have that pre-drawn uh, diagram like this we must not shade in those electrons or if we don't have it you just don't draw it at all the focus of nuclear physics are isotopes an isotope is a form of the element that has the same atomic number but a different mass number than all other form of that same element so remember the atomic number not atomic mass is the idea of element is a passport of element shows which elements what we are talking about let's say we have two different type of carbon that we call isotope carbon 12 has atomic number six that's why it's carbon it is carbon 12 because it has 12 nucleons that means have sum of protons and neutrons is 12 or mass number is 12 so since that atomic number is 6 we can find number of neutrons so number of neutrons is 12 minus 6 is 6 in carbon 14 we have atomic mass 14 and atomic number 6 so in order to calculate number of neutrons we can subtract 6 from 14 and we get 8 so carbon 14 is heavier because it has two extra neutron compared to carbon 12. the most common isotope of hydrogen that occurs naturally has a nucleus consisting of only one proton and that is mass one there are however two other isotopes of hydrogen that are important in the nuclear science so they have their own names deuterium and tritium deuterium which has one proton and one neutron is naturally occurring substance so mass is two tritium which has one proton and two neutrons so mass is three it is only produced as a byproduct of the human-made nuclear reactions here are three isotopes of elements of hydrogen the first one naturally occurring hydrogen one mass one one proton one electron hydrogen two or deuterium as mass two made with one proton and one neutron and hydrogen three which is a tritium has mass three which is made with one proton obviously has to be one because it's id of the element and what is left has to be two neutron
Carbon-14, which is one of the isotopes of carbon, has some interesting properties that are useful like carbon dating, which provides a reasonable, accurate method to determine the age of fossils, an object made of things that were once alive. Most samples of elements consist of a number of different isotopes, some occurring naturally and others produced in laboratories. The radioisotope is an unstable isotope that spontaneously changes its natural structure and releases energy in form of radiation. Radiation is energy released in form of waves when a radioisotope undergoes a structural change. This radiation can be harmful if it is not properly controlled, and in some cases, however, these radioisotopes are beneficial. Nuclear medical imaging is a diagnostic technique that involves injecting a patient with a small dose of radioisotope, such as technetium 99M, which is an isomer of the technetium 99. These materials are called radioactive tracers. They emit radiation that can be detected by gamma cameras and converted into an image. By comparing radiation patterns of an unhealthy organ to those of a healthy one, doctors are better able to pinpoint a tumor or a cancer. One of the advantages of a nuclear imaging over X-ray is that it provides a detailed account of both hard tissue, like a bones, and soft tissue, like a flesh. Radioisotopes have a medical treatment application. Since 1950s, iodine-131 was used to diagnose and treat thyroid disease. Iodine-131 can be used to both identify a diseased thyroid gland and halt the production of hormones, actually overproduction of hormones. Radionuclide therapy, or RNT, is used to treat various types of tumor, bone pain, and other conditions. In a cancer treatment or tumor treatment, the fundamental idea behind RNT is to bombard rapidly dividing harmful cancer cells with the radiation. These cells tend to absorb the radiation more than normal cells, which prevent them from dividing further, so spreading the cancer. And that's about it for the section 7.1. Have a good one.